morning, Trainiacs. We are now starting the long journey home to Winnipeg. I like that, because I'm homesick. I actually bought a flight two days earlier than I was originally scheduled to go home. So on the flight out, we did Instagram Q&A that seemed to go really well. Y'all liked it. Y'all were very engaged. I had lots of cues to A. So we're going to today answer some of the most common questions that came up over the course of the past week. We're going to give you some fairly cool stats that came out from Iron Man about the event. And I spent the first flight to Johannesburg here figuring out what my next goal is in triathlon. It's big. It's probably not what you think though. Well now, Trainiacs, we are in Hong Kong. One 12 hour flight down, one more to go. And my time clock is messed up. It is 9.44 a.m. in Hong Kong. That means it's 3.44 a.m. in South Africa. And it is 8.44 p.m. back home. To sleep or not to sleep on this nine hour layover? That is the question. All right, now considering what I assume is my just absolutely prime mental state. Let's warm up today's video, or tomorrow's video. Is it yesterday's? I really don't know what date this is gonna be posted with some of the stats from the Half Iron Man 70.3 World Championship. 64%, 2,908 athletes were male. 36%, 1,656 athletes were female. 42 is the average age of male registrants. 40 is the average age of female registrants. Erwin Helmul is the oldest participant at 78, while Mao Karano from Japan is the youngest at 18. 12 athletes celebrated their birthday on the weekend. 48 of the 50 US states were accounted for, with California being the largest. More than 185,000 registered Ironman athletes tried to qualify for the Ironman World Championship. And since the series began in 2016, the Ironman 70.3 World Championship has been led by wins from Australia, winning six times, followed by Germany with five champions. Great Britain has four champions, Switzerland three, the United States and Spain have two, while Canada and New Zealand each have one. Yeah, Canada. And finally, over 3,000 volunteers helped make the Ironman World 70.3 Half Ironman Championship a success in 2018. I gotta go find me a shower in a napping spot. Whoa. Living my best life right now here, Trainiacs. Airport lounge meeting room, AKA Terran's on the floor nap room. Just right over there. All right, with that two hour little snooze on the floor, I think I'm ready to start answering some questions and straying some words together. English. Number one, what is the Vaseline protocol that I talked about for my running shoes while well, the night before when I dropped off my Transition 2 bag? To avoid blisters and not have to wear socks, put Vaseline like everywhere, literally everywhere on the inside of the shoe. No blisters. No real protocol other than that. Hey, what happened to pro triathlete from Australia, Mel Hothchild? Well, I emailed her uh, to see if she actually had some comments on why she wasn't there. She didn't even come because she got a little bit of an injury in Cebu and she isn't going to risk not being healthy for Kona this year. I think she's still my pick to unseat Daniela Reef, but damn, Daniela Reef. Next, is Lucy Charles the next Daniela Reef? I I think so, considering that she's so young and she's still just improving in biking and running so much, all she really needs to do is get faster on the run now. She's right there. She came off the bike with her. She held the bike with Daniela. Why no socks? Save time and transition. Simple as that. However, I think all of the pro men put on socks. 
So maybe I'm just being a show off. Next one, what is the idea behind SOS electrolytes taken dry during the run and not in liquid form? Well, I don't want to carry around a big liquid flask. I just want to get some electrolytes. I'm going to take my fluids and my calories from Coke, so I already have all my fluids. I just want to get topped up on electrolytes because those electrolytes will keep the messages from your brain telling your muscles to fire going if you're not low on electrolytes. So I just had a little tube of SOS and it's like the same as having base salt or salt stick or things like that. Keeps your legs firing. Goal average run cadence. Um, I don't have one. There's actually been a lot of studies on this that 10, 20 years ago people would be like, pick up your cadence, pick up your cadence, you gotta pick up your cadence. Everyone actually has their own natural cadence, so it's not really something I worry about anymore. As long as it's, say, over, I think 170 or so, you're good. And I think I was 173, 179, something like that. Finally, do I have a percentage of FTP target? Um, no. FTP, I believe, is actually fairly overrated when it comes to race performance. Why I say this is do an FTP test and it depends so much on how you feel that day, how hot it is, where you're doing it, whether you're doing a tri bike or a road bike, there are so many variables and then you go and take that, that number and say that's my absolute number and it's gonna be my number for the next four months until I do another FTP test. And then you go and add a whole bunch of variables in a race, it's like so far different that it doesn't really matter. And we look at, say the last FTP test that I did, put my FTP at 263, I had average power of 226 in this race, that's a 86% of FTP target, that is way higher than most people would recommend and I think that's because I underperform on FTP tests but I overperform on races so it's more important to see what you do in your training and your racing so I use things like a race simulation kind of bike or a Olympic distance triathlon to get my race power figured out. All right. Let's go settle in to uh, check in. I have no idea where my flight is. All right, Trainiacs, this is it. Last major flight, 12 hour haul. I'm just gotta grind it out, and then I'm in Vancouver. It's just a three and a half hour flight from there. After this, I can do three and a half hours standing on my head in the galley. So let's talk about my race goals for the next race. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, we set goals right away so they're nice and fresh. And I spent the first flight going from Port Elizabeth to Johannesburg, writing down everywhere that I thought that I could improve. And I've got some time goals that I want to work towards. Where are you? Okay, so in the swim, I don't think I've got any more time in me in the immediate future. That was a fast swim overall for just about everyone in the race. So if I can stay the same at that 29 to 30 minute pace for a half Ironman, really happy. Transition one, it was really long. It was a three minute transition, lots of running. So on a perfect course, it's a little bit shorter. I could maybe save a minute there. Bike, that was a slower bike given the effort because the road surface was really chattery and it was also quite slippery. So if I put out that same sort of effort with a little bit more aerodynamic position because I'm going to lower my, my position by about a quarter of an inch over the next couple months, we're talking maybe one to two minutes at the same bike effort. T2, I could maybe shave about 30 seconds off of that. The run. The run is where I need to focus on. When I talked yesterday about focusing on three things, number one, two, and three for me, seems like the run. If I wanna compete in this age category, I gotta get closer to about a 130 run off the bike. That means that I've gotta be running something like a 125 in just a pure half, and the 130 time in a race is a 416 kilometer. So that means 
that I gotta, I gotta start doing my tempo runs at around four minutes per kilometer. I gotta start doing my speed work at around 3.30 to 3.45 a kilometer, building my long runs off the bike to around 4.10, and making sure that I don't fade. Put it all together, and I think that in a perfect scenario, I'm not saying this is the next race, I'm not even saying that this is next year, but in a perfect scenario, just like I said, this year my body might have a 440 in me, I think I can go under 430. Specifically, 42830 if you tally up all of those potential areas of improvement. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a off season that's really early and it's going to include Kona so that I don't have to worry about training for anything after Kona, start picking back up the training after Kona, and then I want to look at like a January, February kind of race, which means that I'd be traveling overseas and that makes a lot of sense because I've had a lot of people, trainiacs, while in Port Elizabeth say that there are a lot of people that follow me in like Southeast Asia and China where triathlon is growing and a few people said that those races need help getting publicity on them. So it might make a lot of sense for me to go and race just a soupy humidity kind of race. So that's it, Trainiacs. That is what's up. If you aren't already subscribed and you want to follow along to the rest of the journey, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. And if you are subscribed, you are like an aisle seat in business class with a free upgrade. Like just if that could happen right now, you'll hear about it on Instagram. All right, later, Trainiacs.